briefly talking about the pharma induced rural power anarchy, the main cause of which is seasonal power demand, and also about te two technological interventions done by the states. One is meeting the uh, seasonal power uh, meet meeting the seasonal power demand to through temporary connection, and also checking the malpractices done by the farmers through uh, high voltage distribution system. Then I'll also talk about an alternative uh, scheme. We did a survey in 55 villages in uh, these five states of around 1400 rural, rural power con uh, consumers, both agriculture and non agricultural users. Uh, this is a typical uh, scenario, power supply scenario in India, where you have a discount giving uh, um, power both to agriculture consumers and non agriculture consumers through a common uh, distribution network. So what happens is uh, uh, these every consumers are given flat uh, power, free power or power on flat tariff. So uh, the discounts are forced to ration these every consumers, which again affect the non every consumer. Uh, this graph shows that there is actually a seasonality in agriculture power demand, which is not actually uh, met by the uh, power supply, except in some states like maybe Punjab. Now what happens in uh, such a scenario is uh, when the farmers do not get enough power uh, during uh, the season when they need, they will uh, resort to all sorts of mad practices which will result, uh, result in the transformer overloading which subsequently affects the non agri consumers. Now we did uh, the survey to uh, look at how the uh, non agri consumers as well as agri consumers are affected by this uh, rural power anarchy. Uh, we can see that except in case of non-agri consumers in Gujarat, in all the other st uh, states, all the consumers are uh, facing um, uh, one, around 1 to 5 interruptions per day. Uh, we also looked at the percentage of response, uh, respondents who complained about heavy voltage fluctuation. Uh, in case of uh, domestic users, more, uh, around 50 per, more than 50% of the domestic users uh, has to have to face this uh, heavy voltage fluctuations daily. Um, but again, in Gujarat, these non agri consumers are uh, said that they do not face such uh, problems. We also looked at the uh, annual average spent on power quality related repairs by non farm uh, consumers. Except in Gujarat, in all other states, these non uh, farm consumers have to uh, spend some amount of uh, uh, money on the uh, repairing the, uh, for the power quality problems. Uh, in, again, except in Gujarat and all the other states, including uh, both agri consumers and non agri consumers, they uh, uh, invest uh, at least some amount in uh, having coping devices like stabilizers or in case of farmers, diesel pumps, etc. We also looked at the percentage of pump breakdowns in, each, in all these states, and what we found that uh, at least at one point of time in, uh, in a year, many of the farmers face uh, pump breakdowns. Uh, but you cannot say that this is mainly due to uh, power interruptions and fluctuations. Main reason is that, but it can also be because of the poor servicing of pumps and also lowering of water table. Uh, now uh, we look at uh, the two interventions by states. Uh, the obvious solution for this is treating every consumers like other consumers. But then we saw that in Kerala this is happening, but uh, they gave 24 hour power supply with metering. But again, the, uh, 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 both the agri and non-agri consumers are getting poor quality power. What NT and West Bengal is doing is they are meeting the seasonal power demand by uh, giving temporary connections uh, when the demand is there. Gujarat has the, actually, from the data, it's clear that uh, non-agri consumers in Gujarat are getting high quality power. What they did was they separated non-agri consumers from agri consumers. But again, the problem is that uh, in, a, uh, in the case of farm feeders, the problem of this poor supply power is there. So uh, what Gujarat now is doing is that they are having high vigilance system in uh, especially in areas like North Gujarat which has helped to check the uh, malpractices by agri consumers. In areas where they cannot go for high uh, vigilance system, especially in Saurashtra region, they are uh, considering uh, high voltage distribution system. Now what they are doing is that uh, they found this is effective, so they are trying to uh, completely change the entire uh, feeders into high voltage distribution system. Now uh, when we look at temporary connections, uh, both the states consider this as a temporary solution only. It helps the discounts to cope up with the uh, demand at peak season and also reduces farmer induced rural feed anarchy to a certain le level. And West Bengal, uh, from the farmer's side, they are, it's easier to get a temporary connection 
than a permanent connection for, because for permanent connection they need this uh, groundwater permits from spray. Uh, from discom side, uh, their cost is reduced because they are, uh, I mean, they are cost with respect to uh, laying out infrastructure for park, uh, permanent connections. It also reduced that to a certain level. An uh, interesting point is that uh, many farmers are actually become irrigation service providers. Instead of irrigating their own land, they buy power and then they sell water to uh, other farmers. Now, uh, West Bengal is considering changing this temporary connection bridging to permanent connection bridging. They have abolished uh, sweat, sweat permits in areas except dark zone areas and over exploited areas. And they also have the discount to provide farmers uh, permanent connection as an installation goes to one lakh. In NP, actually, they have given one million connections last year as temporary connections. Um, uh, the flat, uh, they, uh, they are charging higher flat tariff than permanent connections, but a part of this is paid by the uh, government. Now, uh, the farmers are supposed to pay in advance the uh, tariff, and so the discounts are also getting a cube cash. Farmers are happy with this uh, because they get the connection within one to three days of application. Again, uh, in case of small and margin farmers, they prefer temporary connection because they don't have to pay the tariff for an entire year. They are pay paying tariff for only for like one to three months. So they uh, actually prefer this. Even larger farmers are going for both permanent and temporary connection. And another important uh, thing here is that the discom actually um, uh, encourage the farmers to own transformers here. And in such cases, uh, we have found that the cooking is reduced uh, to a certain great extent. Now, uh, the problem with the discom is they actually give temporary connections by cooking. So it's difficult that for them to monitor who is actually uh, stealing power or who is actually uh, who has actually paid and uh, get the power. So they prefer permanent connection and they see this as a stop gap arrangement. But the farmers prefer temporary connections because they don't want to pay flat tariff for the entire year. Now uh, uh, the best solution is of course give 24 hour power supply by metering but in states like Madhya Pradesh uh, because of opposition from farmers and discounts it's not possible. Um, then uh, um, we'll talk about high voltage distribution system in Gujarat and what exactly HVG is. Uh, in a low voltage distribution system, you have a transformer, a high capacity transformer, which is connected to a different, uh, to a large number of uh, pump boilers. In high voltage distribution system, uh, you are giving a small capacity transformer to, uh, uh, to one or two farmers. So here actually the LT line length is reduced considerably, so it's difficult to put. Again, the farmers, because they own, they have this feeling that they are on the uh, or uh, they are the owners of the transformer because they are, I mean one farm is connected to one transformer so they also prevent cooking. Second thing is that because you are giving a limited capacity of transformer it is difficult for the farmers to uh, increase the capacity of their pumps illegally. Now uh, we uh, did a uh, quick survey of 150 farmers, uh, we looked at the uh, HVDS and non-HVDS feeders, also we looked at before HVDS and after HVDS scenario. And what we found that the voltage has actually increased by 50 volts uh, in HVDS feeder, feeder. We looked at these parameters, uh, percentage of farmers who face voltage fluctuation. This has uh, considerably reduced to 11 percentage from 72 percentage of 60 percentage. Uh, frequency of voltage fluctuation uh, also reduced considerably. Percentage of farmers uh, who had like who did not have in, uh, adequate vol voltage was around 75 percentage earlier. But in HVDS, it came to 15 percent. Again, the percentage of farmers who face power interruptions, uh, that also almost half. And frequency of power interruptions also reduced. And the percentage of pump burnouts, the farmers faced also reduced considerably. The main question is whether HVDS is viable. Uh, within Gujarat, uh, I mean, when different discoms tried this on an experiment basis, they found that uh, in North Gujarat, actually, when they did HVDS and they worked on payback period, it came out to be around 30, 37 years. Whereas in Saurashtra, when they did uh, HVDS, they found that it's actually boom because uh, the ATNC loss is reduced considerably, and when they calculated payback period, it was around six to seven years. The main uh, characteristic of HVDS is that there is a reduction in technical losses to a certain extent. But the most important is that it prevents farmers from uh, cooking or increasing their uh, capacity of pumps. But uh, uh, I mean, in case, uh, um, 
So uh, we have seen that in temporary in case of temporary consumption, farmers prefer that more. But uh, the discounts are not willing to give because there is a chance of more debt. In case of HVDS, it prevents debt, but then uh, it's not possible for uh, every discount to give that uh, because of a viability problem. It like uh, for example in South Russia when they did uh, they uh, uh, um, transform one feeder into HVDS, it costed around 200 crores for one feeder. So that kind of uh, it's very high, high costly. So unless you have a uh, like uh, the ATMC losses are very high, then it may not be viable. Uh, now we thought of an uh, alternative scheme. Uh, so what we are doing is that uh, when uh, here you are, uh, you can actually separate. Uh, you first separate the agriculture feeders from non-agriculture feeders. Then you select uh, within a village some farmers who can act as an irrigation power providers. And these both the, to these irrigation power providers, you can give a transformer. And and this transformer can be meter. And uh, uh, these irrigation power providers can uh, actually supply power to different uh, farmers according to the seasonal needs. Uh, now, up to this uh, irrigation power providers, you will be providing them HVDS, and because these are like privately owned, um, I mean, there will be less chance of uh, theft also because they will prevent that. Now, according to the number of farmers each irrigation power provider will be serving, you can. Uh, calculate the capacity of the transformer, you should get them. Um, the advantages of this are that, uh, of course, you are going for metering in the irrigation power providers. It helps in energy accounting also. Uh, there will be reduced cost of infrastructure considering the cost of uh, uh, tra transforming the entire agriculture feeder into uh, HVDS. It also reduces transaction cost of the disco. That will be reduced and it also provides the uh, discounts and ability to provide agriculture power when needed. But the major questions are like whether this scheme is technically feasible and whether the farmers are going to accept such a uh, scheme and if it is accept, whether we are giving like too much power with in case of uh, uh, with the large farmers. Thanks. Thank you.